Hey guys, my coach here. Today we'll be discussing how to make an armor stacker on a budget. This video is going to be catered for two types of players. The first one is going to be for the players who wish to play armor stacking very early in the league. I'm talking a few days in or for the players who don't have a lot of currency and that have always been, you know, impressed or curious about armor stacker, but were afraid that you would have to have multiple mirrors to make it viable. Well, in this guide, I will, for both types of players, showcase that you can make it pretty early on and that you can make it for a very small budget of a couple of divines. Now, before we get into that, for those who don't really understand what armor stacking is, there are pros and cons to the build. The pros is, first of all, it can be started on a small budget. One of the version, the Dorianis prototype, it can be made on a quite tight budget and it could be scaled to a pretty much infinity. You can go from maybe 10 to 50 divines up to mirrors upon mirrors to dozens of mirrors. What's really cool about that is that the build doesn't really have a high ceiling. It doesn't have a ceiling, sorry, which means every time you invest more, it will be very strong. Like the, the curve is quite linear and it won't flatten once you reach a certain point and you won't hit a wall. It has very good defenses, uh, which I know a lot of Path of Exile players do not like dying. They don't like squishy stuff. So armor stacking is known to be one of the tankiest builds in the game. Uh, and in this version, we are pretty much immortal to every single small hit. Like, enemies can be hitting us a ton, and we will not be dying. Uh, big hits on this version, uh, we can tank pretty big hits. Now, don't expect uh, tanking one uber big bring mavens and stuff like that. Uh, you will be able to tank them all uh, once you invest a lot into armor stacking. But for this build, uh, you are going to be very tanky. Matter of fact, on POB, we have an infinite hit pool, which is uh, quite fun. The DPS is very strong. Armor stacking uh, is known also to be able to pretty much insta-phase many, many bosses. Now, again, on the budget version, that will not be happening, but you will have millions of DPS on top of a very tanky build. It is unbelievably strong for Simulacrum, Delve, and bosses, which is very helpful because early on, and also just for currency making methods, uh, all three are well bosses maybe not but um, they are very nice way there are nice ways to actually generate currency to be able to invest more into your build and make even more currency another pro about this specific build is that it does have a lot of uniques which is very cool for certain players who are afraid of crafting or that don't know how to buy specific items those uniques will basically just be buy them and smack at them into your build and they will they will work now, on the con side, the uniques is also a con. What do I mean is in the early game, certain uniques will be more valuable, which means their value is going to be very high and you cannot craft them for cheaper, which means it can block certain players to get into this specific build because they need certain mandatory uniques. Also, armor stacking can be very scary to get into. It is quite complex and very... Um, like, there's so many ways of making an armor stacker, even though they do... Uh, they do share similarities. There are different many there are many different variants, and people could be afraid of entering them. Uh, however, with this build, you should be having a very nice understanding of what you're doing, and I'm pretty sure after this video, you will need no more help. It is not so good at mapping. So for the people that want to do, you know, uh, winged uh, legions and stuff like that, well, it might not be the build for you. It can map, and you know, you won't die, and you'll do a, no a lot of DPS. However, uh, this is not made for mapping specifically. Also, you cannot league start. You can play the build day four, day five of the league, but you cannot league start the build because, well, first of all, you need a lot of armor to make it work and you need certain mandatory uniques which do not exist when the league actually starts. All right, so for our armor stacking on the offensive side, well, usually stacking armor is basically just to have a reduction of physical damage from hits. And the maximum cap is 90%. So most players, once they reach 90%, there's, well, not most. Once you reach 90%, there is no point in scaling more armor, except if you use something called Replica Dream Feather. Replica Dream Feather will increase your attack damage by 1% for 450 armor. On a low end armor stacker, you can go between 400 to 600,000. And on the high end, you can go between four to 6 million in league. And then in standard, you can even go upwards of 10 million. Now, if you do the math on the low end, that is 10 times your DPS. And on the high end, it is 100 to 150 times your DPS per sword. That is completely bonkers. And you can reach 
multiple millions, even sometimes uh, hundreds and billions of DPS, just thanks to that sword. So that is going to be uh, the actual main reason we are going to be stacking a lot of armor is because uh, stacking armor will increase our damage. The other thing we're going to be stacking uh, is going to be negative lightning resistance. So why are we going to do that is because we're going to be using a version called the Dorianis prototype armor stacker. Dorianis prototype is a pretty much well, it is a mandatory unique for our build. And it has three very, well, four very interesting modifiers. The first one is you cannot deal non-lightning damage, which means you need to use a lightning damaging skill. For us, it's either going to be smite or lightning strike. The next uh, interesting line is armor also applies to lightning damage taken from hits. This means with our 90% dam physical damage reduction, we also have a 90% reduction to lightning damage taken from hits. Now, it's important to understand hits and damage over time is not the same thing. Hits is if you get attacked by an attack, so spells and damage over time does not apply. The third modifier is lightning resistance does not affect lightning damage taken. This means if you have positive lightning resistance or if you have negative lightning resistance or if you have 0% lightning resistance, there is no difference. So we will not be scaling our lightning resistance above 0%. But then the most interesting modifier is nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours. The modifier before that says that we do not have, we were not affected by our lightning resistance means we can have negative lightning resistance, which will apply to nearby enemies. So we will be stacking minus 100, minus 150 and upwards to minus 200% lightning resistance so that the nearby enemies will have well, pretty much minus 100, 150, which will basically take, they will basically take 200, well, yeah, 200% 200 more damage, right? Uh, if example, they had, even if they had positive lightning resistance, it goes, it shoots back down. So it is very powerful. Your DPS will go double, maybe triple sometimes, uh, thanks to that. And also what's cool is the nearby enemy is actually a quite a large radius. It's a radius of six meters or 60 units, uh, which is basically three quarter of your screen. If your character is in the middle, well, you go three quarter on the left, three quarter on the right, top, bottom, and that is the whole range of Doriani. So it is a very big range. So even um, if you're using Lightning Strike, which is which can hit certain enemies a bit long range, it will also apply for most of your screen. So very strong, very powerful. And the only downside to Doriani's prototype is that it does not protect you from damage over time for Lightning. So those Mana Siphoners, which are the uh, little shits with the blue circle, the moment you get into that, your HP, well, your HP, your, yeah, your energy shield is going to drop like crazy. So that is the biggest bane of the build. It's damage over time, for, uh, lightning damage over time. Except that hits don't really kill you because you have that armor. So you basically have 90% resistance to hit. So very strong, very powerful and very cheap, unique. For our defense, well... Armor stackers can be constructed very differently. And on this version, we will have our main source of defense is going to be the Aegis Aurora Champion Kite Shield. <clears throat> the interesting modifier with uh, the shield is going to be Resplenish, uh, res yeah, Resplenish Energy Shield by 2% of armor when you block. On the lower end, as I said, you have between 400 to 600,000 energy shield. So if we take the example of 500,000 energy shield in the middle, 2% of that is 10,000 energy shield when you block, which means, and we have below 10,000 energy shield, which means if you block, you will be right back up to your maximum HP. So as long as you don't die from a one shot and you block uh, consistently, uh, you are immortal. The other way of stacking defense, well, in addition to stacking the, the Aegis, is going to be going CI or something. We call it CI. It's actually Chaos Inoculation. It's a keystone on your passive tree, which uh, makes your life be one, but you're immune to chaos damage. You're immune to damage over time chaos and then immune to any hit of chaos. So you don't have to scale any chaos resistance. You are literally immortal to it. You have a 90% physical da damage reduction. You have a 90% uh, lightning resistance to hit thanks to Doriani's prototype and you have 90% elemental resistance capped for fire and cold thanks to melding of the flesh and purity of ice. So basically hits will pretty much never kill you unless it's a massive, massive, massive kill hit. And the only thing that will actually kill you often is going to be damage over time on physical 
damage over time, so bleeding, stuff like that, or damage over time for lightning damage, which will uh, pretty much instantly kill you. However, those are quite rare. Uh, those mana softeners, you don't see them often. And if you pay a bit attention to your screen, you can stay like away from that range and you won't really die from them. Now, what's important to understand is that aura uh, armor stackers are actually a subgenre of aura stackers. And what we're going to be stacking is not just the quantity of auras we have. It's going to be the effect of those auras on ourselves because we don't care about any el anybody else except ourselves, right? Um, for armor stacker, obviously. And we're basically just going to stack the most amount of aura effect on ourselves. And that's why you're going to see so many armor stacker have similar trees with just, it's just a bunch of clusters with introspection. Introspection grants you 10% increased effect of auras on you. And we're, our whole tree is going to be either stacking just aura or stacking introspection clusters. That will help us, well, scale the strength of our auras, right? For our, you know, purity of element, purity of ice to get more elements of resistance, uh, our wrath, you know, to deal more damage, but also haste to go be faster and attack faster. But also it's going to help us scale our armor and evasion. Uh, and it's going to be the main source of what helps us stack the most amount of armor. It's going to be stacking... Uh, auras so basically stack auras you get more armor that's more damage more defense more anything just stack auras okay you're literally an aura stacker just stack them auras another reason um well not another reason but one of the few details that you might see when looking at armor stackers is every single armor stacker even if their main skill is not smite use smite in their build why is that well smite is a is an attack but it is also an aura when you attack with smite and you strike an enemy, you will be granted an aura that gives you a ton. And when I tell you a ton, I mean like sometimes enough to give you 100% damage. So basically doubling your DPS uh, sometimes. Well, it depends on how how strong your build is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, smite is an unbelievable, crazy strong aura because it grants you so much added lightning damage. And it also scales with aura effects. So if you have, you know two or three times the effect of auras, well, Smite will also be three times stronger. So that's why you're going to see even players who play, you know, Molten Strike, Energy sh um, uh, Spectral Shield Throw, Lightning Strike, they're all going to use Smite. You're going to see them attacking with their normal attacks, and then gonna, you're going to see them Smite once or twice to then be able to have that Smite aura. So don't be a fa uh, like phased if you see Smite on a build that is not Smite. However, on low-end budgets builds, well, most of the time your main skill is going to be smite, and so you will have the main skill plus that aura going for you, which is very good. All right, so for the brief overview of the build, and you need to understand every single aspect of this build uh, to be able to make it because it is a bit of a complex build. The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be stacking the most amount of armor. Why do we want to do that? We get increased damage with Replica Dream Feather. We have increased energy shield recovered with Aegis. We have 90% physical reduction and 90% uh, lightning resistance to hits. That's why we stack armor. How do we stack armor and why do we stack aura? Well, I'm um, sorry. Why do we stack armor? Well, we're going to be stacking aura effect. Aura effect will help us stack the armor. It's going to help us make our offensive auras stronger and it's going to help us make our defensive auras stronger, right? So we all know that auras is a very important part of your build. So the stronger they are, the stronger your build is. We want to have a nice chance to block in the, you know, 60, 70 percent and maybe capped at 75. Why? Because we have a higher chance of blocking. If we have a higher chance of blocking, we have a, well, higher chance of recovering all of our energy shield and to abuse uh, ages. Finally, we will be stacking negative lightning resistance because thanks to Doriani's prototype, we have a unbelievably massive dps boost the first thing uh, we're gonna learn about scaling armor is we don't only scale armor we also scale evasion why because there's a keystone in our passive tree called iron reflexes which converts all of your evasion rating to armor what's really cool about that is you can scale your evasion and then with iron reflex it will be then transformed to armor and then that evasion that was transformed into armor can now also be scaled by increases in armor. So you're kind of like double dipping, basically. Uh, you're scaling evasion, which will then transform into armor. You then scale armor. 
on top of the flat armor that you have, right? So we're basically, thanks to Iron Reflex, you are literally sometimes like quadrupling, maybe quintupling the quantity of armor you have. So very, very strong keynote, a keystone, sorry. It is the most important, uh, I well, key, it's the most important passive point you have in all of your tree. Now, before we start, you know, increasing and multiplying all of that armor and evasion well you need a lot of flat armor and evasion to then be multiplied how do we get that well inherently your gear is going to give you a ton of flat armor and evasion aegis doriani dream feather march of the legion alpha owl they're all bases that can give you upwards of thousands uh, maybe a thousand five hundred uh, of armor or evasion so they are very powerful the second way is going to be using a jade flask which will grant you 1500 evasion rating we will not be using the flask that grants you 1,500 armor because as we know between evasion and armor, it is better to have more flat evasion because you can double dip in that. And also because we have a limited five flask slots, there are other flasks that are more important or that will give you a lot more benefits than getting a flat 1,500 armor. Finally, well, and most importantly, our grace and determination auras will give us a ton of flat armor and evasion. Now, before we get into the increases and the more, it is important to understand what increase and what more is. Let's take an example where you have 100 evasion and you have a 200% increase evasion rating. You will now have 300 evasion. Now, let's say you added 20% to 20% increase evasion. You have 100 evasion and you have 220% increase you will now have 320 evasion. That is a, um, sorry, that is, you're basically adding your increases up. Now, if you had a more, a 20% more on the same example of 100 evasion and 200% increase, you now have 240% increase, which is a multiply. Instead of having 320 evasion or 300 evasion, sorry, you now have 340 evasion instead of 320 if you went for the increase. So as we can see, more is better. Now, it is a lot harder to get more, uh, and it exists a lot less than increases. So should we just completely drop increases and just go for more? No, because more will actually scale with your increase. So the more you have increase, the stronger the more is. Let's take the, an example, you have 1000 evasion, but instead of having a 200% increase, you have 1000% increase, you will then have 1100 evasion. Add an, an extra 20%, it will become 1020% increase, which will then end up being 1120 evasion. So you basically have 20%, uh, you have basically 20 extra evasion, if you add that 20% increase. Now you take the same example, but instead of having 20% increase, you have 20% more. You then have 1,200% increase because it's multiplying. And instead of having 1,100 evasion, you have 1,300 evasion. So if you went for the 20% more, you would get 180 extra evasion than if you went for that 20% increase. So you see between the first example where you have the same value in increase or in more, you have a 20 evasion difference. But on the second example, you have 180. Well, your more is basically nine times stronger in the second example. And that proves how having a lot of increase will make your more stronger. So don't cheap out in your increase, but you need to understand that more is a lot more powerful than increase. Small rant aside, how do we get more? Well, we're going to be using Determination and Grace, which will grant you more evasion and more armor. We're going to be using the Stib Knight Flask, which will grant you 20% more evasion. And we're going to be using the Basalt Flask, which will grant you 20% more armor. There's going to be other ways of increasing our armor and evasion, but those are going to be the main aspects of how we're doing so. To go back to the fact of how to get even more armor and evasion, well, we're going to have to stack our aura effect. How do we scale aura effect? There's two ways of scaling aura effects, which we will be using uh, in our build. The first way to scale an aura's effect is by increasing the level of that said aura. Take an example of grace. At level one, you have 227 additional evasion and 20% more evasion. At level 20, 
you have 2,575 evasion, so basically 10 times, 11 times more evasion rating, and 29% increase more evasion rating, which is what, an additional maybe 4% increase. Now, we won't stop at level 20. We're going to go in the 25, 29, 30, and on high-end builds, even upwards to 33, uh, level 33. Let's go back to Greece. At level 20, we have uh, 2,575 evasion rating. If you go to level, uh, which you, you can easily get it to, at level 27, for example, you now have 3,600 evasion. Go to level 30, 4,180. Go to level 33, nearly 4,500. So as you can see, um, by adding a 10 level, we're basically making our aura 75% stronger. And that's how, and it's the same thing for every single aura. Determination is the same thing. You have 2000 armor at level 20, at level 30, uh, you have 3346, which is basically a 50, what, a 50, 60% increase, I don't know, uh, of your, of your aura. On top of that, it also scales, you know, a little more. So for determination, you go from 49% more to, you know, a 53 or 54% more, which you might say it's not a lot, but 5% more, as we said, if you have a lot of, of increases and stuff like that, it is huge and it can grant you a lot of a lot of armor. Like once you transform grace uh, and all that, uh, sorry, all that evasion rating into armor, scaling the level of your auras, especially for grace and determination is completely bonkers. Now this, as I said, does not only affect those two auras, you know, uh, Wrath is going to also be affected by that. Discipline is also going to be affected by that. All of that good stuff. The higher the level, the better it is for every single type of aura. Now, how do we how do we get more levels? Our top priority, as we've learned, is that Grace, which will grant you evasion, is the most important aura. Grace is the most important aura in your build. That means we're going to give it top priority. We're going to be using something called the March of the Legion, and it is the best item for that. What does March of the Legion do? Socketed gems are supported by a level 25 blessing. So what is a level, what is a divine blessing? Divine blessing is basically your aura is going to cost you mana and it's going to be a duration skill. So usually when you pop an aura, it's going to take, it's going to reserve some of your mana and it won't move and you have them all the time. With divine blessing, it's going to cost you mana and you're going to have the buff, the same, the, you're going to have that same aura as a buff for, well, depending on the duration, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds. It depends on your duration, right? Also, Divine Blessing grants you increased aura effect. At level 25, it grants you a 34% aura effect. So now you have 34% already increased aura effect of your grace. And then, what's really cool is it gives you plus 3 to plus 5 socketed aura gems on the March of the Legion. This means on a nice roll, you have plus 5 level of... Um, of grace so now your grace is not level 20 or 21 it's 25 or 26. then the corruption on march of the legion because you know march of the legion is quite a common uh, item you can corrupt them and some corruptions have plus two plus three uh well plus two auras and then plus two duration or plus two auras and plus one to all socket that will grant you another plus two or plus three socketed uh gem level and then you can also link it to something called empower support which will grant you one uh, between zero to plus two level of socketed skill gem if you go even enlightened it can go plus three so yeah basically um you just put grace with you know if you can if you have the budget and power in the march of the legion with a nice corruption and you basically have a between level 27 to level 33 um grace so very strong very powerful now for the rest of your auras we're not letting them be okay we're not abandoning them we're going to be putting them into something called the alpha's howl the Alpha's Owl gives you plus two level of socketed aura gems, which is very cool. It also gives you mana reservation efficiency, so you can put more auras without having to use an Enlighten. We're going to be putting that uh, those auras in there. And if you have other auras, because we're going to be having a lot of auras, on our gloves, we can have corruptions with plus two, plus one, stuff like that. So we're just going to put our uh, all of our auras onto items that have a plus level of gems. Basically, we're just going to want to have the most amount of plus one, plus two uh, socket origins and stuff like that now the second way of scaling aura is by scaling its well effect how do we do that well most of our tree is going to be us specking into passive tree uh, passive skills that grant you aura effect uh, example in the bottom left picture you're going to see increased effect of non-curse auras from your skill we're going to be using we're going to be specking into 
aura nodes, pretty much all of our tree. And then uh, we're going to be using a ton of clusters, which will have the introspection passive skill, which grants you a 10% increased effect of auras on you. And we're going to be stacking them. On the low end, you might have, what, six or seven introspection. But on the high end, uh, we go like, you know, nine, nine introspection. If you go in standard, you can even go 12 to 15 it's completely bonkers, right? We're going to stick to League, obviously, but the goal is to be stacking the most amount of introspection possible. We're also going to be using our Ascendancy, which will also grant a more or effect. And yeah, so just basically your whole tree, your whole Ascendancy is just get the most amount of aura effect. Now, how to use and abuse Aegis. As we said, Aegis will recover all of our ES the moment we block, okay? So we will take the damage and then we will recover our energy shield. Now that means if we do not die from a single one hit and we have enough chance of blocking, we cannot die from small hits. As you can see on the bottom right, the effective hit pull is written infinite. Now on the rest, you know, physical hit, fire hit, cold, lightning, stuff like that, you have your maximum hit because if it's a one shot, it will kill you. But as long as it is not a one shot, your effective hit pull, if you do it right, will be infinite, which means you can AFK in the middle of swarms of monsters and you will not die. It is completely bonkers. Now, to do that is you need to be able to block, right? And how do we get block? Well, first of all, block is a layer of defense that will entirely prevent any hit damage. So if you block, you don't take any damage. The maximum is 75%. However, if we were to scale 75% block on, you know, block attack damage and block spell damage, it will actually be detrimental to us, to our defenses and to our build to scale upwards to that. So we're going to be using a shortcut called glancing blows. What does glancing blow do? Is it cha your chance of blocking anything is actually doubled. Uh, doubles the block attack damage and doubles the block spell damage. However, you then take 65% damage from blocked hits. So basically, you have a 35% reduction, damage reduction of your blocked hits. But you don't have to scale pretty, you're pretty much not going to have to scale any block damage or block spell, sorry. Now, how do we get to that 75%? There's two blocks that we need to think about. The first one is the block attack damage. Aegis will give us a 32%. The prodigious defense, which is a notable passive skill on our cluster, is going to give us either 3% or if we have multiple of them, uh, another 3, so 6. For a total of either 35 or, se or 38, which will then be doubled by glancing blow for a total of 70% or 76%. So very easy. You just, in your normal clusters that you're going to be using for your build, and with Aegis, you are already pretty much blocked attack damage capped. For the block spell damage, we're going to have 25% from our Tempest Shield, which is a kind of, it's a spell uh, that has a reservation, and it will grant you 25% a chance to block spell damage. You're going to have 8% from Arcane Guarding, which is a passive, a passive skill in your tree, and then 3% or 6% from Prodigious Defense yet again from your clusters. For a total of either 72 or 78%, which was which is going to be capped at 75, chance to block spell damage. So just by using those items, you are li literally immortal. Duryani is going to be pretty much the second or, well, depending on you talk to who, the main or the second way of scaling unbelievably sources of damage to our build. The thing is to use and abuse Duryani, we're gonna have to, we're gonna need a lot of negative lightning resistance. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, by playing the game, you have an inherent minus 60% lightning resistance. Now that is given once you defeat, you know, the boss, the boss Kitaba twice. Then we're going to be using something called a melding of the flesh, which is a unique jewel that is very strong to get us, um, you know, elemental resistance cap to 90%. But it also gives you the, uh, well, the con of giving you minus 80 to minus 70% elemental resistance. Then you're going to get another minus 10 to minus 20 from your Thread of Hope. You're also going to have, I think, minus 10% resistance from your belt. And then if you want some extra negative lightning resistance, you can use some Venter's Gamble um, to go to minus, I think, 25% lightning resistance per ring. So easily uh, you can reach minus 100, minus 150 
uh, lightning resistance. I don't suggest going below minus 150 because you would need it would require too much resource and already at minus 150 and the difference in damage between minus 150 and minus 200 is not as strong as if you went from you know minus 100 to minus 150. So minus 150 is a very nice point, but between a minus 100 and minus 150, you don't really have to break your head more than that. And that is literally the the way you scale negative lightning resistance. It is very simple, very easy. And as we said, no matter what's your negative lightning resistance, it changes nothing because Doriani does. Doriani considers well, you're considered at 0% lightning resistance, and it's only the enemies that have the negative lightning resistance. Another tech that we'll be using in our build is going to be Berserk. Berserk is the strongest buff in the whole game. It is completely bonkers. It basically at level 20 grants you 44% more damage because it gives you 20% more attack damage, 20% more attack damage, 20% uh, more attack speed. It grants you 30% more movement speed and 90% less damage. As we've already explained, more is a lot stronger than increase, which well proves how Berserk is completely strong. However, to be able to use Berserk, we need something called Rage. Rage is going to be like the mana for our Berserk buff. And how do we generate, well, that Rage? We're going to be using Kaom Spirit, which was sadly nerfed, but still very strong for us. It requires 300% life regen per second to grant us one Rage per second. We won't be gaining a lot of Rage thanks to Kaom Spirit, but we're going to be using something called the Armor and Evasion Mastery which every four seconds regenerate equal to 1% of our armor and evasion rating over one second. Now, if you do the math at 500,000, sorry, yeah, at 500,000 energy uh, armor, you do 1% of that. That is what, 5,000, yeah, that is basically 5,000 life per second. 5,000 life per second divided by three is what, well, 15 rage in one second. So that will be every four seconds, you have basically a plus 15 rage. Um, so that paired with Kiom Spirit, uh, that, sorry, paired with your, you know, life regen that will be given, you know, with vitality and your belt, you will have a pretty nice uptime in Berserk. So very, very nice uptime, even though it was sadly nerfed. If you have the currency as well, you can invest into the Berserk Forbidden Jewels to get that uh, one rage every time you hit, stuff like that. Uh, but that is a bit of a higher end budget, but this will also help for the Berserk uh, uptime. The thing is, by using Kiln Spirit, we will have no life regen, which means we can't transform the life regen into um, ES regen. So we basically don't regenerate any energy shield, which means it is very important to have leech or gain energy shield on hit when we're using that setup. Now for Ascendancy, we're going to go for the Necromancer, which will give you a 2% increased attack speed to you and your aura, uh, to you and your allies per aura. What's really cool about the Necromancer Ascendancy is that is attached to every single aura. So if you have 10 auras, that basically gives you 20% increased attack speed. And what's even cooler is it actually scales with aura effect. So let's say you have 10 auras, it gives you 20% increased attack speed. And then your 10 auras have 100% increased effect. That's basically 40% attack speed. So it is completely it is completely stupid. And on the low end, you can go with it's basically 40 to 60% increased attack speed. So very, very strong ascendancy. The second ascendancy we're going to go for is going to be the champion, which is going to give you aura effect. Intimidate. Intimidate is basically enemies take 10% increased damage. So that's 10% more damage. And fortify. You have a chance of fortifying an enemy, which will get, give you a fortification buff. And a fortification buff per every stack, which the maximum stack is 20. And every time you gain one fortify, you take 1% less damage. So at max buff at 20, you basically take 20% less damage. So very strong. These two ascendancies are very powerful. For those who've never played Cyan or yeah, and they don't really know what that is, a Cyan is basically like a jack of all trait. And you can have access to every single type of ascendancy, but you have them not as powerful as if you were like the actual uh, character, right? So your the the real champion ascendancy is stronger than the champion ascendancy we have access with our sign. However, we have access to every single ascendancy, so very powerful, very strong. 
for the tree, uh, depending on the prices of the Forbidden Jewels, you could either go for Guardian or Berserk. Um, for this build specifically, I don't think there's really a point in investing for Guardian. However, you can invest because later on you will be using either Guardian or Berserk. But if you have the currency, go for Berserk. It is a no-brainer. It's a lot of damage, a lot of rage, and very nice. We're going to be using Sign and we're going to be going upwards in the tree, which means we don't need any Intelligence. And because we're going to be starting our, like our tree is going to start from the sign point and also from the duelist point, we're not going to need any strength. However, our dexterity is going to be lacking and we need a lot of dexterity to be able to use, well, our auras at level 20, right? For, you know, haste and grace. We're also going to need a lot of dexterity for our replica dream feather and for our alpha owl. So you need a lot of dexterity and how to get a lot of dexterity. It's going to be by using brutal restraint. A brutal restraint is the, on the bottom left of the screen. You're going to see that circle, like orange yellowish circle. It grants you a lot of dexterity. And then with your clusters, you're going to be you're going to be having, you know, plus three, plus five, plus six dexterity somewhere. And that will be enough to make for you to not be able, well, for you to have enough dexterity to use all of your items. The rest of the skill tree is literally, as explained in the video, aura effect, mana reservation efficiency. It's a no brainer. For the charms, if they still exist, if they don't exist and you are watching this video, it pretty much changes kind of nothing. Um, go for mana reservation efficiency, armor and evasion, max res, armor applies to fire, cold and lightning, uh, anything that is very helpful. At this budget, you can't really search for something specific because we are really on a tight budget. However, if you go for not a, don't go for a max roll mana reservation efficiency or else it's too expensive, but if you go for a... 8, 9, 10% mana reservation efficiency, it can fetch for just a couple of chaos. And if you have three of them, you will be able to fit extra auras. Okay, so this is going to be the uh, build segment, so showcase in game. So let's first talk about the gear and their gem. So I've spoken about pretty much all of the gear, so I'm going to go over it quickly. On top, we have the Alpha Owl, which is used uh, first to give us lo a level of socketed aura gems. We're going to be using Determination, Wrath, Discipline and Purity of Ice, those are going to be our main gems for our auras and those are the most important ones That's why they have they're inside the helmet for that plus two determination obviously because it gives us armor wrath because it's our main source of damaging aura Discipline is basically equal to your number of HP without discipline uh, your hit like if you have 500 ES That's literally your life. So yes, um, and discipline is very important so we're going to put them in the helmet for that additional number of level. And then Purity of Ice is going to be inside there because it's going to give us maximum additional core resistance, which we want. I think at, yeah, at level 22, uh, it does not give you the plus 5%. Five, plus 5 so I forgot to corrupt it. So uh, we can try and corrupt it. If it doesn't work, well, it's sad, but it happens. Um, let's try it out. All right, it bricked. But if it was level 20, uh, if it was a 21, it would become 5% additional core resistance. So make that, make sure, well, it's going to be one of the first upgrades you want as a level 21 as Purity of Ice. For our sword, we are using Replica Dream Feather, self-explanatory. It is our, it's how we scale armor into damage. Inside, I'm using Cold Snap, dam Cast when Damage Taken, and Molten Shell. Molten Shell is a defense skill which scales with armor, so it is the best uh, defensive skill for us, well, our guard skill. Cast one damage taken, so it is completely automated, uh, automatized. And then we link also Cold Snap. So Cold Snap, uh, we're, you know, we're using only lightning damage. So you might say, why are we using Cold Snap? Well, Cold Snap will like do a burst of damage. And then within that radius, when you kill an enemy, you have a 25% chance to gaining a frenzy charge. When we're making armor stackers and, and well, pretty much 90% of the armor stackers, they can't or have a lot of difficult gen uh, generating frenzy charges which are, you know, 4% increased damage, stuff like that. It, it's a very nice charge to have. So Cold Snap will be kind of our generation of Frenzy Charge. It is not, that doesn't mean we're going to be Frenzy capped all the time. It's not going to be the case, but it does happen to have one or two or three extra Frenzy Charge, and we can't say no to that. On the right side, we have Aegis Aurora, which uh, basically renders immortal. The corruption is totally unnecessary. It is useless because I do not have any auras inside here. I'm running Berserk, Ancestral Protector, and Flame Dash. Berserk is the best buff in the game, so it gives us 20% 20, 20 more attack speed, 20% more damage, 
19% less damage and 30% more movement speed. So that's a 44% DPS boost and you zoom a lot. Ancestral Protector is basically a totem that increases your attack speed. So when, when, especially when you're in a place where you're not moving, so when you're delving or when you're Similac when you're doing simus, you just pop it right here and then you just attack. Can I not have you know, uh, it's not really necessary. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be mapping with this type of budget also with an armor stacker, but if you are, totally unnecessary. Flame Dash is going to be our skill. You can go for a Leap Slam. Um, when I'm mapping, I go for Leap Slam because I don't have to wait for a, sorry, a cooldown, a cooldown time. But when you're doing simulacrums and stuff like that, I do suggest going for Flame Dash. It is a lot more precise and a lot better. For our chest, we are using Duryani's prototype. It is uh, the reason why we are scaling negative resistance. As I said, at this budget, anything between minus 100 and what? I'd say 120, minus 120 to minus 150 or minus 160 is the sweet spot. You don't have to go above. And if you're below 100, I still suggest to use mate. If you have difficulty, uh, you could use a Venter's Gamble with negative lightning resistance. For our amulet, I'm using the Eternal Struggle. You don't care about the Implicit. The only thing you want is your Searing Exarch Implicit to be of a higher tier. Why? Because there's the mod Kill Enemies that have 15% or, or lower life on hit if the Searing Exarch is the dominant. So this is basically Culling Strike, but it's actually 50% stronger. So any enemy that has 15% HP or lower will instantly die no matter how much damage you hit him with. So very strong. Plus, it gives you strength, dexterity, and intelligence. You don't need strength and int, but dexterity, if you have a nice roll on dexterity, it is very useful because, uh, well, the main issue with all of your gear and your aura and your dream feather also, because it requires a lot of dex, is to have enough attributes for your build, okay? So dexterity is going to be the main issue. So it does help. If you want an even budgeter option, you could go for the jinxed, yeah, I think it's the jinxed amulet for the aura effect. But if you had to choose between one and other, the Eternal Struggle is the better deal. For the rings, it's either going to be Venter's Gamble with positive resistance except the lightning resistance, or you can craft uh, rings yourself. I suggest crafting the rings yourself because you have then access to the reduced mana cost of skill, which will help you because, uh, example without them, uh, Grace costs a lot, and even with the enchant 25% reduced mana cost and all of your tree, uh, I don't have an aura on yeah without it you will have difficulty um, you know using it so it'll it'll be an issue but with them uh, thankfully you are able to pop it with no problem for the belt i'm going for the immortal flesh why uh for the life regen that pairs well with kaom spirit and also it has negative lightning resistance which is good because we are scaling negative lightning resistance it also gives you increased armor if you're not ignited frozen or shocked um and you might tell yourself, yeah, but well, I'm never that. Well, we're not using Purity of Elements, which most skills, uh, most armor stackers do. Why? Because we have a lot of aura effect. And if we use, well, now I don't have my flask up, but if we use our Purity of Elements, our negative lightning resistance will go up. So to not, the most important things to not have is to not, to not freeze, right? So we cannot be frozen thanks to Alpha Owl. And with our Pantheon, we will also not be able to freeze and have a reduced chill effect. For our gloves, we are going Kaom Spirit for that Rage, Berserk, uh, completely broken. For the boots, March of the Legion, I was lucky with corrupting the plus two, but it is not really necessary. Right now, at this time, maybe three or four weeks after League Start, well, even more now, it, they fetch with this corruption and this plus five for maybe like a Divine Max. So it is fairly cheap. Now let's talk about Flask. Uh, flask, you have to think about the actual type of flask and then the prefix and the suffix. The prefix is gain three charges when you're hit by an enemy. It's either one, two, or three. Go for at least two or three. And that is going to be what is what we're going to be using for all of our flask. It is very good, especially when we're running some lacrims, things with a lot of monsters. We are never going to miss our flask, okay? And if you have a low... Well, because our flask are going to be the main source of our, you know, basic and our more multiplier, right? We have 20% more evasion, flat 1,500 evasion, 20% more armor. We have onslaught, movement speed, increased evasion, increased attack speed, reduced mana cost. So without it, you can't run grace. And without grace, that's like, what, 90% of your damage that's gone. 
So they are very, very important uh, to have. And the best way to have a high uptime is gain three charge. You're going to see on a map, we're just going to let a few enemies hit us and they're going to be they're going to go right back up. And because we're nigh immortal to small hits, we really don't care when enemies hit us. It's literally a joke. Now for the suffix. Before we get into the suffix, it is important to note that whether the suffix is on a certain flask or the other, it changes nothing, but sometimes it can change the price. Let's take the example of the basalt flask, which is our armor. If I had 53% increased armor, if you wanted to buy it, obviously, it would make the value go up by like three or four times. But if you had armor on the evasion flask, well, they're going to be cheap. So you don't have to have armor on the armor flask, evasion on the evasion flask, movement speed on the movement flask and stuff like that. It's unnecessary. Just make sure you have all of those prefix somewhere. So you want attack speed during effect, which is going to be very good because that's just damage. Increased armor during effect. Very good. It's a nice multiplier. The, um, well, additive increase, you know. Increase evasion also is very important. Movement speed, well, you don't want to be too slow. And when you're mapping, you can swap uh, one of those flasks. Once you have enough damage for a Quicksilver, it will help a lot. You will be zooming. But right now, no Quicksilver flask onslaught will take the charge. And then the 25% reduced mana cost of skill, which is uh, mandatory for us to be able to use Grace. Now let's talk about our tree. Archery is very, very simple, very, very straightforward. So let's start with the sign part. Well, let's actually start with our um, ascendancy. We're going for the Necromancer. It was already explained. The auras from your skills grant 2% attack speed uh, is linked to every single one of your aura. And it adds up and it also increases with your aura effect. So very strong, very powerful. We are going down for the champion, which gives us, you know, taunt, uh, fortify, intimidate, and also increased curse aura. And then we continue for the past of the duelist because our tree will start from the sign, but also from the duelist. Now, right in the beginning, you see brutal restraint. Brutal restraint is very important because without it, you don't have enough dexterity. Okay, so very important to have brutal restraint for our dexterity requirement. Right below, I put a jewel with the corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you. Actually, when you are on a lower level, what I suggest you do is uh, actually don't go here. Sorry and you just pop one here and it will be enough as you can see here i am currently level 97 but i have seven points left so that means at level 90 you can very comfortably uh have this tree you can even do it a bit on a lower level maybe 88 is uh, okay but yeah then we go for uh, aura effect right aura effect mana reservation efficiency we go here for energy shield here is the maximum mana, reduced mana cost of scale, reduced mana cost of scale. That is mainly to be able to use our grace without an issue and trying to make it as, as free as possible. Then on the right side, we branch up for the clusters, chaos inoculation to make us chaos immune, more aura effect. Now for our cluster, it is the same logic for all three of them. We need an eight passive cluster, which requires three points before getting to our sockets. Okay, it's basically that. If you have one point, two point, three point, and then your sockets, that is a nice cluster. We're going for the first one. We're going for prodig prodigious defense for the block chance. And then we're smacking small clusters with mana reservation efficiency of skill, which is going to be helpful for us to smack all of our auras and introspection, which increases our, well, all of our auras effect and especially our armor. On the left side, uh, we still go up here. We have the corrupted blood. Uh, sorry, on the right side, we also have melding in the flesh for us to be, you know, to have higher, ch well, to have our 90% mana, uh, to, sorry, to have our 90% elemental resistance. We're going for elemental overload because we have a very low chance to crit and our multiplier is very low. Going for elemental overload, which makes that our critical strike deal no extra damage. However, we gain a 40% more elemental damage for 8 seconds if we crit. Um... It will be an increase in DPS, okay? And because we're using Smite, we don't need to f we need we don't need to think about the accuracy rating. So that's why it is a lot better than going for Resolute Technique. Resolute Technique is not the option, the best option when we're going for Smite. For those who know what Resolute Technique is, then on the left side right here, we are going for Energy Shield, Energy Shield, and then Chance to Block, Spell Damage, right? To be able to cap our Spell Damage chance. Same thing here, Cluster. Once you have you know more than seventy percent chance to block. I go for any cluster that gives me anything with lightning related. Here we have lightning damage leech as energy shield, very useful. 
and then more clusters for mana reservation efficiency. Either go for two ones, two passive ones, or three passive ones, depending on how many points you want and how many reservation uh, you need. Then we're going to go down right here. It's going to be more mana reservation efficiency. And we are going to go for our Thread of Hope with the large ring. You need the large ring and nothing else because you can then use Glancing Blows without having to spec all the way down. And we are going to use Divine Shield, which is going to be very helpful for a, a bit of, you know, ES regen um, because, because, you know, we're using uh, Kiln Spirit, which means we cannot regenerate uh, our energy shield thanks to our life regen with Zealot's Oath. So this is another way of getting a, a nice amount of energy shield regen. Now in the part where we start with the duelist, we're going to go down for unwavering stance. Because we have no evasion, because we because of Irene Reflex, we are not going to evade anything. However, when we get hit by enough damage, we can be stunned, right? Which means we can't move. And when we're getting a jumped by like 30 different enemies, if you're stunned in the middle of them, you will not be able to move your character. And forever like you cannot do anything you'll have to disconnect and come back to the game so unwavering stance is very helpful because you will never get stunned with actually no downside because we cannot evade already because we don't have evasion write down another cluster for ma energy sh well maximum mana and then same again same story cluster drill with introspection and mana reservation efficiency Another wheel is another mana reservation and efficiency. Okay, it's literally the most important stats in all of our build. Now, the most important, um, how to say, the most important keystone and passive point in all of our tree is Iron Reflex, uh, where we convert all of our evasion to armor. And then finally, we're just going to go right back up here for the armor and evasion mastery. Every four seconds, regenerate life equal to 1% of armor and evasion rating over one second. It's a lot of rage regen. Uh, very useful and then obviously it gives us armor elemental resistance uh, and there's no no downsides so this is what your tree should look like at level 90 if you're a bit lower i suggest not swapping before maybe level 80 85 is very 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 low okay so i'm gonna make pobs for different levels so you will see the level uh, the more level you have where to spec into but quickly if you do have a lot more levels then you would spec uh, right over here for the basic jewel you would uh, put one of your jewels right here and then you would spec two points uh, right here and you'll put your forbidden flame and your forbidden flesh if you have the currency but those are usually they fetch for a higher price so we're not going to do that for now i am just going to think if i am missing anything uh, but i do not think so oh yes i am missing something the new addition to path of exile the charms Charms, we only want mana reservation efficiency, okay? The low rolls, the 4% are kind of useless. So try and go for at least 8%. They are very, very, very cheap. Now, if this build, uh, if the charms do not exist and you are watching this video and you have no clue what the hell they are or you know they don't exist, I will probably update the POB for that you don't have to use any charms. But if you do, are using charms and charms still exist, Mana reservation efficiency of skill and the rest, we couldn't care less, okay? Um, some could go for the chance to gain on, uh, Onslaught as well. So you could replace your Onslaught Flask with a Quicksilver. You could go for that. You can go for Culling Strike, stuff like that. But wait, no, don't go for Culling Strike because we have Eternal Struggle. So basically just go for Mana reservation efficiency of skill. It's the best one. It is cheap and it is, well, the most helpful thing because you can fit more auras. On that note... Um, that will kind of end the the video and the showcase. Well, the showcase is uh, what I'm going to do actually right now. So I'm going to go into a map with you boys uh, live up. Now, I might have... Uh, I'm going to try for a specific amount of wisps. So hopefully we have at least 3,000 so I can show you the, you know, kind of like the tankiness of the build. If uh, I have a very shitty wisp because I am very bad at um, the mechanic, like very, very bad... Uh, I will just, you know, put the example of the map in, in the video and we don't have that issue, okay? So let's just do this. Uh, for the, yeah, for the explanation on how the build functions. So you're going to be, you know, walking around and once you have, you know, your minus 25% reduced mana cost of skill, you're going to pop a grace and grace is a duration now. So every 12 seconds, you're going to have to say, oh, well, I'm going to pop grace. Now, 
the best way is you're going to be shooting enemies while striking enemies and you're going to see you're going to be dealing no damage once you see you deal no damage just click on your grace and it's just you're going to go back to doing enough damage the rest is pretty simple it's move and strike when you need a good burst of dps or when you see a massive monster in the middle of a um of like a pack you can pop the Val Smite and it will pretty much just instantly just murder the, um, the monster. Okay, so we are currently sitting at a very sad, uh, I think like 2,300 wisps. So I just want to showcase just like, the goal of the build is not to map, okay? So you're not going to be mapping with this build. You're going to be doing simulacrums, delving and stuff like that. I just wanted to show the overall tankiness. It is very okay. It, it, it's very fine. Uh, the tankiness, like as I said, small hits will not kill you. And as you can see, let's just go see a big pack of monster. I mean, you're going to see Aegis Aurora doing her work. The moment we block something, we go right back up to maximum HP. And then as you can see, our flasks are going up the moment we get hit. And literally, you're, <laughs> you're literally killing enemies without even doing anything. So very strong, very powerful. And um, when, when you need like a, when you see a big monster, for example, you can pop uh, your Val, Val, uh, your, sorry, your Val Smite and it will like literally shotgun yeah you see it literally shotgun the living fuck out of that rare mob who died instantly so you would have had to you know strike it many times but when he's in the middle uh it can smite and overlap and then you can deal a huge amount of damage so i'm gonna go and put like you know a video of just me tanking i th i'm gonna hope for at least 3000 4000 wisps you can go for higher i think if you go up to 8000 uh, with this 10 divine budget because of our maximum hit damage we cannot AFK it because they can one-shot you. But as long as something cannot one-shot you, I am telling you, you are immortal. So on that note, I'm not going to speak more. You're just going to have this showcase. This ends up the video. Hopefully you enjoyed and you have fun with your armor stacker. I have a Discord. It will be in the uh, video link. So you will be able to enter the Discord. We have a lot of players. We have 5,500 in there. We have a ton of helpers that are there pretty much all the time of the day helping players. Obviously, we are more specialized in bow builds, but we are still knowledgeable in armor stacking. So if you have any other questions, comments, stuff like that, you can do it in there or you can do it in the video. And um, yeah, I'm going to repeat myself, but have fun and um, good luck.